Jujutsu Kaisen is my favorite modern shonen, so of course I'm gonna make a video about it when a new PV comes out. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the changes and stuff, the complete overhaul in the visual aesthetics of the show, and of course then break down the trailer itself with some of the really cool animated scenes in it. What they've done is find the sweet spot for every single individual element and perfectly nailed it. With the visual design and anime, sometimes less is more. And the simplicity seen in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2's PV is the perfect aesthetic choice for it. The fact that there's an inherent beauty in simplicity is just a bonus. Of course, the main idea of using simplistic designs in the first place is that it's easier to animate. Comparing the new designs to the previous season's designs, you can see just how much highlighting, line work, and shadows are just removed. This could just be the result of there being not enough time to animate so much, so they had to simplify the character designs. But the result just matches so well with my taste in anime character designs that I love it. The compositing has also actually been toned down in some cases. Despite what people think about Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1, the compositing, it was bad, but it was also needlessly complex in some areas, which is what made it look so bad. A good example of this is the finale of Jujutsu Kaisen, where the road and the walls had horrible looking textures on it, which is just not necessary. Remove those textures and it would look infinitely better, but they went out of their way to add complicated textures on the road and walls to make it look worse. Especially the wall, the diamond pattern on this wall is just so needlessly complicated and so distracting, especially in fast sequences like when Keichiro Watanabe is animating. You can't say that this is not composited, but it is bad compositing. It's just compositing that is not even necessary. For season two, again, even with the compositing, they found the sweet spot. And even though the line work is so minimal, it pops out so well. There is absolutely no blurring of the line work. They're not making it look thin. And I always love it when you can really see the line art just pop, which is why I really like Akira Matsushima's character designs for Demon Slayer. That's what he does with those character designs. And no matter how heavily composited it is, Demon Slayer character designs, the line art always pops out. Overall, with every single component, that is the art direction, animation, and the compositing, season two of Jujutsu Kaisen feels like a budget chainsaw man. And I'm saying that in the best way possible. This is not a criticism for Jujutsu Kaisen. It feels like every single major complaint of season one has been rectified. Plus the staff has applied all of the lessons they learned from working on Chainsaw Man here to make something that not only pleases fans, but also is easy on the staff, which is the exact opposite of what Chainsaw Man did. Chainsaw Man just had so many sequences of needlessly complicated animation that only the top 0.001% of Sakuga nerds can appreciate. It just wasn't necessary and it's just such a high amount of effort that I can appreciate, but I can still live without. Plus, of course, Ryu Nakayama's vision meant that Chainsaw Man also had really sophisticated character designs and also needed consistent, realistic character acting, which meant a lot of keyframes. Whereas Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 is all about working smart and not hard, as you can see with the simplistic character designs, the minimal compositing. It all allows for the staff to make something that's very visually appealing with far far less work compared to Chainsaw Man. I really can't emphasize on just how genius Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2's visual design is, and the brain behind this genius is none other than Shota Kushizono. Sungo Park's involvement with Jujutsu Kaisen started and ended with action animation and action storyboard. He's not someone who really cared about the visual aesthetic of a show, as you can also see from his work in God of High School, another show with really good action animation and storyboards, but the visual aesthetic is not very pleasing at all. The compositing and art direction is very mediocre slash bad. A directorial creative vision is necessary to have a pleasing aesthetic for the entire show. And this is not even something that is made by the compositing team. Like Teppe Ito worked on Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man, but the compositing work for Chainsaw Man is far superior to that of Jujutsu Kaisen. And that's not because Teppe Ito magically received more talent as he moved into Chainsaw Man's production. It's because he was specifically directed by Ryu Nakayama's vision. It's not about having individual people who are really talented in a show. It's about having individual people who are really talented, but also united by a common directorial vision. That's why directors are really the most important component when it comes to the visual aesthetics. Let's take Fate Apocrypha, for example. Fate Apocrypha had so much unnecessary digital processing that some of the animators who worked on it did not even want their name attached to that show. All of that unnecessary digital processing was completely removed for the Hakiyugo episode. 
And that's not because the photography team changed for that episode. No, it's because of Haki Ugo leading as the episode director. Similarly, even with Jujutsu Kaisen, Shota Goshizono's episode 17 displayed much better compositing. There were scenes where the art direction actually made the scene look better which was just foreign for Jujutsu Kaisen. But the background CGI still looked like shit because Jujutsu Kaisen's CGI team was just bad. Most of the Sungo Park directed episodes are the worst ones in terms of visual cohesion. Look at these digital filters, for example. These are laughably bad. I wouldn't be surprised if this was outsourced to an Indian studio. And once we get to the domain expansion scene, the aesthetic completely shifts from anime to cheap animated wallpapers. Same with Sungo Park's episode 23, Fushiguro's domain expansion has really ugly color design choice and bad compositing which is just extremely distracting from the action itself. And I already talked about episode 24 with the bad textures and bad CGI background. Now I talked about Shota Kushisuno and his understanding of visual cohesion. But how is he as a director? He's one of the best in the industry. <laughs> Again, that's not something I say lightly. He's one of the most creative and genius minds in the anime industry currently. He is the person who you need in the project to make the highlights. For example, Chainsaw Man Season 1, every single episode was directed by a genius person. But even among all those genius people, the most important episode was directed by Shota Kujizono. And the same thing again happened with Osama Ranking, a show with a lot of talented people working on it. But the most important episode, the highlight of the entire season, was done by Shota Kujizono. Now this is his first time as a series director, so only time will tell whether Jujutsu Kaisen 2 will drown in his ambition, but I don't think that's gonna happen because he has experience working with episodes that have limited production value put into them. Jujutsu Kaisen episode 8 is an example. That's his directorial debut, and that episode did not have all that much production value put into it. He still made that episode look really good because of his genius storyboarding. The way he's just laid out the scene of Gojo walking into this room just pulls the attention of the viewer to focus on the conversation that these two characters are gonna have. So I'm sure that Goso is experienced enough to work around horrible production schedules. As for the other people working on the show, it's just upgrades throughout. We have an assistant director this time around and that is Ryota Aike. And there's no one who better embodies the idea of assistant director than Ryota IK. Ryota IK is the kind of guy who has a solid KD but also has an incredible number of assists. In every project that IK works on, he's just so good at assisting. And it's not like he's just filling in the gaps left by the series director. He's a solid director himself. He's very good at storyboarding. So having these two, Shota Gujizono and Ryota Aike lead Jujutsu Kaisen 2 is the best thing. The character designers remain the same, Tadashi Hiramatsu and Sayaka Koiso. However, this time I'm sure that the roles are being reversed. Before, Sayaka Koiso was the sub-character designer and this time Sayaka Koiso is the main character designer. This might partially be because Koiso better fits the choice for character designer when taking Goso's aesthetics into consideration and also because Sadachi Hiramasu is busy working on that original MAPPA movie where he's the assistant director. Sayaka Koiso's character designs look really good. They look like an in-between of season one character designs and the manga designs. Koiso is also a very consistent animation director and I have no doubt that for season two, she will be the chief animation director, which will again ensure that all the important scenes hit hard while the rest of the scenes don't even need that much input from animation directors because as I said before, the character designs are very simple and Goso is definitely one to give full creative freedom to the animators. Koiso is also a really good animator. She animated the last scene, like the very last scene of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1. She also did animate a beautiful action segment between Gojo and Sukuna that has a very good layout and is very well animated, but no one talks about that much because it's overshadowed by the next scene animated by Keitsuro Otanabe, which is a shame because this is genuinely one of the more dynamic and creative action sequences in Jujutsu Kaisen. As for the art director, Junichi Higachi is back, he worked on the movie. The movie had significantly better art direction compared to the show. And this time the art direction is also changing significantly. For season one and the movie, the show was trying to be as close to the manga covers as possible in terms of aesthetics. This time they're changing that quite a bit. It's far more realistic, but it's also not like hyper realism, like Chainsaw Man, it's still stylized. And this time I really do hope that the background art is really good and consistent because in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, even with Higashi's art boards, looking really good and really aesthetically pleasing. The final product that we saw in the anime, it completely missed the flair. This could again be because of the bad production schedule of the movie, which couldn't allow for all the background art to look very good. Finally, we get to Teppei Ito, the director of photography, who did the compositing for Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen the movie, and also Jujutsu Kaisen season one. Chainsaw Man really showed what Teppei Ito is capable of in terms of photography when he's led 
by a director who has actual good creative vision for the project. And under the leadership of Goso, he's going to be just as good for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Plus, he is also far more experienced now. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 was his first time as the director of photography. And by now, he's already like really good. Right now in the industry, as far as directors of photography goes, the best are Yuichi Terao, Kentaro Waki, Kohei Funamoto and everyone else like far below that. But I do believe that Tepe Ito has potential to reach that level at some point. There's one more person I want to talk about as far as staff goes. And this is really exciting that most of you people don't know about. And that is Eiko Matsushima as color designer. Now Eiko Matsushima was the color designer for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1's openings under Shingo Yamashita. And while the beauty of those openings was mostly because of Shingo Yamashita, it's safe to say that Eiko Matsushima must have learned a lot working on under an industry veteran like Shingo Yamashita, who is the absolute best at his job. So that is very exciting. The color design in the PV looks very good. And hopefully the season two in its entirety will have good color design. As far as returning staff goes, you can expect the same people. Shingo Yamashita is most likely going to return as the director for the openings. Keitaro Watanabe and Koki Fujimoto most likely coming back as the main action animators. And I have no idea what kind of dirt Seshimo has on Tanaka, that he's actually focusing on one project at his time working with Mappa. But yeah, I'm sure that Tanaka will return. Most likely will direct an episode. Ryu Nakayama will also most likely return as an episode director, which is again really good because episode 19 of Jujutsu Kaisen is one of the best action episodes. Since he's a freelancer though, there's a pretty good chance that he won't work on Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 and it will instead work on Fate Strange Fake with his friends. But I mean, Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen is pretty much being made by the same team. So I would be surprised if Nakayama did not work on this. Similarly, I'm sure that Tatsuya Ishihara will also be returning as a pretty big component of the animation team. As far as people who won't be returning, Dungo Park is not going to be back. And while yeah, I do think that Goso is a better fit in terms of series director. As I've continuously been saying, he has a better understanding of visual cohesion compared to Sungo Park. But there's no denying that Park is an enormous asset in whatever show he's working on. I said this before in one of the videos, I'll say it here again. Having Park as part of your production is like a cheat code. It's very easy to work on a show when 50% of everything will just be done by Sungo Park. He storyboarded and animated almost the entirety of God of High School. Then he came to Jujutsu Kaisen where he did the same thing again. Then in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, with just a little bit of more time that he got because it's a movie production, he was able to properly unleash his talent and made the best highlight of the movie itself. To lose someone like Park who has an incredible understanding of action choreography and action animation is a huge blow to the production. But they have more than enough talent to make up for Park's absence. But that said, unlike Sungo Park, other animators actually need this thing called time to work on things. With the latter half of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1, the schedule had caught up on them. But even then, Sungo Park directed episode 20, then directed episode 23, where he also animated like 90% of the scenes. And then he also directed episode 24, which was the best episode. He definitely has some sort of time bending abilities and his animation style also complements that really well. It's very timing dependent and pose to pose, similar to Kanada style animation. He always knows just the right amount of keyframes to use. So yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen is in very good hands. There are a lot of extremely talented people working on it. Unfortunately, they are not going to have enough time to work on 24 episodes. So expect the quality to waver, expect there to be mid-season production crashes. But because the staff list is so good, even when you do see like limited episode, that is only going to mean that they are prioritizing another episode that's coming in the future. It's not going to be like Blue Lock, where once the mid-season crash happened, Nihira Hajime, Yu Yoshiyama and Ikuo Geso just said, all right. I'm a head out and then just completely disappeared from Blue Lock's production. That is not going to happen with Jujutsu Kaisen. All right, now that I've said all that I want to say, now let's actually do a scene by scene breakdown of the PV itself. So immediately of the bat, what they're doing is flexing the art direction. This scene, look at this. That looks so good. So all of the shots that we get to see here, they're just massive improvements. I love how every layer is moving independently here. I also love the camera tracking onto Gojo's face. And then with the character acting, when Gojo looks down, the camera again moves along with him. That is what Gosha Sonor does with the camera. He plays around with the camera a lot. He's mastered camera movement because he does so much Blender CGI work himself. Like just look at the work he's done for episode 17 of Jujutsu Kaisen. The background CGI work, the dynamic camera and the characters. Everything here is done by Goso. You can also see the simplistic character designs at full display here. This is a very close up shot and there is barely any detail. Two lines to represent nose, one line to represent lip, and it's enough. You don't need an excessive amount of detail. This is not Vinland Saga or like Berserk, where the excessive amount of line work defines the art style. Again, this is just a really 
simple walk cycle for Ghetto coming into frame. And it looks so good. Plenty of drawings here. It's animated in twos. And yeah, it's just very good animation. The simplistic character design shine through again. It, it looks very much like the manga character design for this specific cut. And also before the light comes in, this is Kagenashi animation, complete absence of shadow in the scene. And Kagenashi is not only a very pleasing aesthetic, but it also makes it much easier to draw because you don't have to draw the shadow highlights. Of course, then they do come to the light and then the animator has to draw all of this. And here comes another really cute character acting segment, really like this. It's again, stylized character acting. I like stylized character acting. If this was done in Chainsaw Man, it wouldn't look good. It would look off. First of all, the face itself, it's more like a chibi-esque face, plus the animation done in a low frame count. How much is this? Let me check. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's switching between threes, fours, and sixes which is a very low keyframe count, which is perfect for a goofy, cute scene like this, which is something that Chainsaw Man's aesthetic simply did not allow the animators to do. With Jujutsu Kaisen, animators have a lot more freedom in terms of what they want to animate, how they want to draw faces, which keeps everything fresh, allows the animator to properly display their style, and lowers the workload of the animation director. Another pretty goofy scene. I really love this. I really love the way the characters are drawn here. Visual comedy is something that I appreciate a lot. And you, here you can see after these two point at Gojo, Gojo to say shrug, and that shrug is fully animated in ones. In regular motion, you can see that way the shrug is happening, the way it's animated enhances the comedic timing. Another show that does this specifically, that is animation on ones and exploits the idea of timing and animation for comedic effect is Konosuba. Konosuba does this the best, and it looks like we will be getting none of that for the Megumin spin-off, which is a shame because of the state of industry, there aren't many animators left to work on Konosuba. But hey, all those people are working on Jujutsu Kaisen, so we're getting the same kind of comedic timing for Jujutsu Kaisen. I might be coming off like a hypocrite here because I kept saying that I don't like chibi designs used for comedic effect, but that's only when they're just used too much. Like in Full Metal Alchemist, fucking hell. Every five seconds you have like a shitty comedy scene that's just unbearable to watch the 7,000th time. Or if it is tone deaf like the end of episode 12 of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's one of the most emotionally engaging episodes. And at the end, Yuji just makes this face and I'm just like, your best friend just died. That was just unnecessary goofiness that takes you out of the experience. But um, Goso is one of the people who I'm sure will do comedy very well because Goso has a very good understanding of comedy. The comedic scenes storyboarded by him in both Jujutsu Kaisen and Osama Ranking are some of my favorite in both the shows. So I'm hoping again that season two of Jujutsu Kaisen hits that balance, not like the constant flow of goofy sludge like Full Metal Alchemist, and also not like perfectly straight that Chainsaw Man does. Again, I would be totally fine with perfectly straight approach, but I'm sure that most fans wouldn't be. So I'm hoping that this will actually strike the balance. This cut of animation is very good. I love the smears here. Yeah, that's just very wobbly smears. Also love the curse designs this time. Uh, the textures are very minimal this time around, or maybe that's because of the blur that I don't see them. Okay, you can see that there are textures here, the same curse textures that they used for season one of Jujutsu Kaisen, but it's much more minimal here. But that said, the compositing on the curses was one of the best compositing bits of Jujutsu Kaisen season one. I really like that aesthetic. They're still keeping that here, even though they've toned it down a bit. As far as the curse design itself, it has a lot of detail. There's a lot of shadows. There's a lot of line art. It's honestly feels like it's more detailed than season one itself. That could just be this animator's style who's animating in this particular scene. Or maybe this is the curse design choice for season two. In season one, some of the most detailed character designs was Hanami and Todo. I'm sure that both of these people were held to animate. So I'm really interested to see how those two characters specifically look in this art style. As far as Shota Goshizono goes, again, this fisheye effect, it is so obviously storyboarded by Goshizono. Like, <laughs> it's almost blatant Goso effect. For those of you who don't know, Shota Goshizono has this trademark fisheye effect. He has such an incredible understanding of space and timing that I explained extensively in this video right here. So please do watch it if you have time or if you're just interested in learning more about Goso or if you're just interested in, in knowing why episode 8 of Chainsaw Man was just such a huge masterpiece. But for Jujutsu Kaisen season 2, now we get to this scene. Again, this is just so blatantly storyboarded by Goso. It's so obvious. The spacing here is just so perfect. Gojo's palm just has so much volume, which is the basis of all animation, right? Creating volume out of nothing. This is all 2D here. It's all flat. If you look at it that way, 
then this scene makes no sense. Why is Gojo's hand so big? This scene only makes sense because our brain registers this scene as Gojo's hand being closer to the camera, a camera that does not even exist. And scenes like this can only be created by people who have an incredible understanding of spacing. And yeah, Gosso is the definition of that. I don't know if these are impact frame and I can't tell because again, this is a YouTube video that I'm breaking down. So the bitrate is absolutely garbage. The scene itself, it's really good. I love the way the glass looks here. The scene is again, just so well storyboarded and it's not just the storyboards that shine. The minimalistic character designs combined with the background art, the compositing and the debris animation is just so good. The compositing team will just have to be much more involved this time with the production itself. It can't just be like animation is done. Now throw it to the compositing team. You can't do that now because Gosso's layouts are just so complex. You need everyone working on that scene to be on the same page. Otherwise everything will look off. Like this scene from season one, Maki just looks like she's running into a green screen. There's absolutely no interaction between Maki and the ground of the forest. And that is because of the lack of communication between the animation team and the compositing team. That cannot keep happening for season two. Also love this cut. The debris here is just really good. I don't know if this is CGI debris or just hand-drawn debris. I think it's a mix of both. And just the right amount of blur on them to put Gojo's hand in focus. And again, with the line art that I'm talking about, every single line, they pop out so well. And I really, really enjoy that aesthetic. But yeah, the camera zooming out, tilted shot of Gojo is very good. Now we get to this scene, which is the most impressive action sequence in this episode. And again, the fisheye effect, which leads me to believe that this is still directed by Gosso. The animation itself though, is heavily stylized, which yes, this is why Jujutsu Kaisen's action is so good because of the freedom that the animators have working on the show. You will not see something like this in Chainsaw Man. Every animator working on that show were forced to have a uniform approach, which made limited animation techniques like Kannada style animation not possible. And ironically enough, limited animation actually can look really good. Just look at the keyframe count. Like Toji, I think his name is, he's here. Next frame, he's all the way close to the camera. And right now he's occupying like 99% of the screen. Next frame, he's all the way back here and he's just a smear. Next frame, he's very close to the screen again. Continuously shifting poses and it's like an extreme pose shift. This is the basis of Canada style animation and limited animation in general, but this is definitely more Canada-esque and I'm, I love Canada style animation. I've talked about it extensively in Cyberpunk's animation breakdown. When you skip frames again, like this is so sick, his entire palm in screen, there's a slash, then he exits the frame and he re-enters it again, occupying like 99% of the screen. And then we, we shift from his face to the blade now. That's a very cool looking blade. And it comes very close to the screen and that's the cut right there. Uh, the two cuts flow seamlessly as far as this PV scene goes, but I'm sure there's a cut there. Maybe an explanation of how the move works or like explanation of techniques, maybe something like that happening here. Or maybe it's exactly like it's shown here in the PV and these two cuts do flow seamlessly in the show itself as well. As far as the scene goes, it takes heavy inspiration from Kyukawa. Kyukawa is another animator who has mixed uh, limited animation with fluid animation seamlessly. He does it really well. This scene in particular looks very similar to his work on Mushoku Tensei's OVA. However, I don't think this was animated by him because of the action lines. These action lines, these are very Canada inspired action lines. These action lines that go parallelly to the character itself. Like it's not even emphasizing on the motion of the arm. These lines are emphasizing the motion of the arms. These are just going parallelly across the characters, which is something like more Canada-esque. And these sketchy lines, also something that Cucover does not do. The way Cucover does his smears is with thick, meaty, inky, black lines and barely any action lines, like no action lines at all, honestly. He just uses smears. And with his animation, it is very snappy but it's not nearly as timing dependent as this is. Like this is pure Kannada style animation. And the next scene is also like similarly Kannada-esque. The shift in perspective here, the extremely energetic pose combined with action lines and the continuous shifts in perspectives. Is this Kai Ikarashi? I think it could be Kai Ikarashi. Yeah, that's just a guess. Most Kannada style animations do have similar techniques. So yeah, this could be Kai Ikarashi. And if Kai Ikarashi is part of Jujutsu Kaisen's production, that is a huge, huge W. All of these smoke effects are just classic Canada-esque and this debris effect as well, classic Canada-esque. I really disliked the digital effects in season one of Jujutsu Kaisen. Here, there's none of that happening. Every single line, again, e easily visible, whether it's on the debris itself or on Toji's pants. Zooming out, goes through Gojo's fingers. Yeah, that's just sick storyboarding, probably again by Gusto. 
But if, it, if this is by Kai Karashi, he's also a genius storyboarder. Could be by him as well. Again, these digital effects, they're not really obstructing anything. It just makes it feel like there's something there. Again, classic Kannada style technique invented by Yoshihiko Umakoshi. This is called the Umakoshi eye, where an eye is very close to the frame and it's very smeared. But what's really surprising here is that Gojo is sweating. So Toji is like an insane guy if he's so strong that he makes Gojo surprised. As far as the detail itself, there's like a decent amount of shadows, but again, barely any line art itself. The simplicity, I love it. This pose that Toji is doing here, again, absolute classic Canada pose. I love this shot. It's just a still frame, but look at the background art, right? That, that grainy effect that they have on the background art, make it look comic book-esque and like barely any uh, outlines for any of these. It's, it just looks like watercolor painting. It probably is watercolor painting, honestly. More goofy faces and more goofy scenes. It's really cute. I love the smears here as well. Again, more Canada-esque animation. Makes me feel like it could be Sato. They also done that, removed that immense amount of compositing, I think, that they do for Gojo's eyes to make them look like marbles. This is a far simpler looking eye, which again is a result of simplifying the scene, but I don't really mind it. It's the same deal that happened with Rakon Titan, like the uh, eyes of the king, the way it was done under Bit Studios and the way it's done under MAPPA look completely different. And I didn't really care much back then. I also don't really care much about it now though his eyes really did look good in season one. Something really cute I wanted to point out here is that she's blushing with the back of her head. You don't see that usually. Yeah, this guy looks like an absolute fiend. And <laughs> I guess Koyasu Sensei is the one who would be voicing him. He does not really look like someone who Koyasu should voice. I've not read Jujutsu Kaisen's manga and I'm still saying this. He looks like someone who, you know, Sakurai should have voiced. That is Gero's voice actor. Or maybe even Mamoru Miyano would have been a fit, but what we're getting is Koyasu Sensei, and I guess it's kind of a similar vibe as far as characters goes. And getting back to Sakurai, I have very conflicted feelings towards him not being cancelled. Because on one hand, he is an incredibly good voice actor who voice acted some of my favorite characters. He voice acted Regan. That should be good enough for me to love him. On the other hand, he is a piece of shit who cheated on his wife for 10 years. So yeah, maybe it's because he already started working on Jujutsu Kaisen. So the staff did not want to remove him midway. Uh, maybe it's because he's not getting cancelled at all because he's such an influential figure. It would be interesting to see if he voices his other characters as well. Like, um, I know I'm coping, but if the Reagan OVA ever sees the light of animation, is he going to be the voice actor or will the voice actor be changed? Similarly with Giyu, another extremely popular character. I don't know who's going to voice act Giyu. And as for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, that is the end. So yeah, it's an extremely good trailer, extremely impressed by it. Looks really good, very aesthetically pleasing. As a Jujutsu Kaisen fan, I couldn't be more happy. That said, I also feel really bad for the staff because the schedule they have is awful. I told them they're working smart, not hard, and they're working way smarter than the staff that worked on Chainsaw Man did. Chainsaw Man was all about going as hard as possible, making the most sophisticated animation as possible. Combined with the fact that the production schedule was mediocre, the staff ended up struggling a lot with Chainsaw Man towards the latter half. Jujutsu Kaisen is going to be much more easier on the staff because it's not nearly as complicated as Chainsaw Man, like not even the same league of complicated animation. But that said, the production schedule is also much worse. Chainsaw Man already had a bad production schedule and Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has a worse schedule for two cores. So I guess we'll just have to trust the plan if Otsuka does have a plan, which I'm sure he does. This must lead to somewhere, right? They can't just keep alternating between Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen with horrible production schedules for both. That can't keep happening. But hey, it's making him tons of money. So it might just keep happening, which would kind of be sad for the stuff. That's about it. Really hyped for the actual episodes to come out. You can be sure that I'm going to be breaking down some of the highlight episodes. If you like this video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike and tell me down in the comment section how it can improve. You can also tell me whatever the fuck you want in the comment section. That's the point of it being there. If you want to watch more of the stuff, subscribe. If you think your friends will like it, then share it with them. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for the views.